Hi, I'm Sharla with Freezer Meals 101. Today we're going to be making holiday appetizers. And appetizers are one of my favorite things, not just around the holidays. So I'm excited for today, but I'm also excited because I love being able to pull things out of the freezer when we have company over or when we're having an event like Christmas Eve dinner, New Year's Eve, or just people over around the holidays. You know how people tend to stop by in between Christmas and New Year's and it's nice to be able to pull things out. I also like to have it on hand for if we just wanna have a games night here with the kids. So we are gonna make so many things today. My plan today is to make a lot of holiday appetizers so that I don't have to think about this again and can relax a little bit and for you that you can make some things ahead and then be able to enjoy your holidays just a little bit more. The first thing we're gonna make is the easiest and that's why we're gonna get it out of the way first and also because it has something frozen so I wanna get it back into the freezer. And that is these grape jelly meatballs. You might have made them before, you can cook them up in the crock pot. Now I'm using pre-made meatballs you can use homemade if you'd like, but today is all about simplicity. This is three ingredients, guys. We are just going to add grape jelly, chili sauce, and throw it in here. Now, if you want, you could mix these together in a bowl first and then pour it over, and I certainly have done that in the past, but today I'm not gonna worry about that because once it gets into the crock pot and comes to a decent heat, then that grape jelly is gonna to start to kind of melt and break down and you're gonna be able to easily stir it. So it's just gonna be a waste of dishes and I don't love to do extra dishes and time if I do it now. So I'm throwing it all just in the bag. I'm going to seal it and then combine it then I'll open it again to take the extra air out because we don't want to get freezer burn and I'll seal it again. This one is just about done and it was like one or two minutes maybe, if that. My kids really love these grape jelly meatballs so this is going to be something that I serve on New Year's Eve. We're having another family over to play board games and their kids also love these meatballs, so I'm gonna put them in the slow cooker, not have to think about anything, just enjoy our time with our friends. Appetizer number one, done. For the second appetizer, I'm going to be doing a buffalo chicken dip. Now, I've gone ahead and shredded some cooked chicken. You can do it cubed if you'd prefer. Some people do it with cans of chicken, but I've never used can, canned chicken myself. So I always either cube it or shred it. And this time I ended up with more chicken than I needed. So I've revamped my plan for today a little bit. Now, of course I could have doubled the buffalo chicken dip and had two of them because we are fans of it. However, I was planning to make Santa Fe spirals which I make every single year and serve on Christmas Eve. They're a recipe that I got from my sister-in-law and she comes on Christmas Eve, so it's just kind of tradition. But I decided to change it up a little bit this year. Now, Santa Fe spirals do freeze wonderfully and if you want, you can see them. I'll put the link right there in the make, to make ahead appetizers I made for my daughter's bridal shower earlier this year. But with the flour tortillas I bought to make sand face spirals, I am instead going to make chicken taquitos using the other half of this chicken. So I'm hoping that my sister-in-law likes them. I think that she will because she really likes tacos and Mexican flavors. So I think that she's going to like this just as much as the sand face spirals. And then it will allow me to use the other half of the chicken that's already shredded and I can do a little bit more variety. So we've got our shredded chicken and now we're gonna go ahead and add some cream cheese, some shredded cheese. You can use cheddar or a Tex-Mex blend. And 
We are going to also add a bottle of ranch dressing, of course, our Frank's Red Hot. And then normally you would add some celery to this so that you get the crunch and the change in texture, but I'm allergic to celery, so I use water chestnuts. I have gone ahead and rough chopped a can of drained whole water chestnuts, and I am just gonna throw those in there. That way you still get the crunch and it's delicious. I wouldn't really know the difference because I don't know what it tastes like with celery, but people that have had both actually say they prefer the water chestnuts. So maybe if you normally make yours with celery, you could change it up and see what you think. You can put the buffalo chicken dip into these tins so that they are right ready to go in the oven and you can actually put them in from frozen or if you want to cook it in the slow cooker you can put them into medium size freezer bags or into large size freezer bags depending on how large of a crowd you're going to be having. I am going to today put this right into the pan that I'm going to be putting it in the oven and I'm gonna freeze it right in this because we're getting close to Christmas and I know that it's not gonna sit in my freezer for that long and my pie plate isn't going to stay hostage for very long because we'll be eating it in just a few weeks. You know what, I've already changed my mind. I'm going to do a small amount in the pie plate because that's really all we'll need for Christmas Eve because it's a very small group of us, just our immediate family. So, which I guess is pretty large, but, uh, but not as large as when we have other people. So I am going to take the rest of this and do it up into a freezer bag. As I was talking about how I like to do it in the crock pot, that actually made me think, hmm, I would like to have one for the crock pot. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing both. <laughs> One thing that saves time when you're doing something like this is to make things that have similar or the same ingredients. So the next thing that I'm going to be doing also uses cream cheese and I'm going to need to shred the cheese. So this way I'm not dirtying extra dishes. I'm going to use the same cheese grater. I've got everything out already. So it just saves a tiny little bit of time. It also, when you're doing like actual freezer meal, freezer meals, it saves money because you can buy things in bulk or buy them when they're on special or in case lot sales. Now with appetizers, not quite so much, but it's the same general idea. This is so exciting for me because I haven't made these in a few years and I love them. And what we're gonna be making is some stuffed bacon wrapped jalapenos. Yum. Now, if you don't like spicy, you might wanna skip this one. There are ways to make it a little bit less spicy, which we're gonna be doing, but it's still gonna have some kick to it. So. First thing that we're going to do is take our softened cream cheese, just mix it together with a tiny little bit of pepper. And if you wanted, you could stop right there as far as the filling goes, because it's actually really delicious to just be stuffed with a slightly seasoned cream cheese. And that's it, and then wrapped in bacon, and that's all you need. But this time we are going to be adding some shredded cheddar cheese into this mixture. So we're gonna go ahead and grate the cheese into there and then that will become what we stuff our jalapenos with. Now that we've got that mixed together, we're gonna to put it to the side and we're going to get our jalapenos ready. So I've washed these, it's a dozen jalapenos, and I'm just gonna dump them on a cutting board, and now I can use the bowl that I was holding them in to put the ends and the bits that we're not using. So you're going to slice off the end, and then you're going to cut your jalapeno in half lengthwise. Now I chose nice long ones, and I chose them as straight as I could. And now you're going to take a small spoon 
to scoop out the inside, the membrane and the seeds of the jalapeno. That's where most of the spice lies. So that's how we're gonna minimize the spice in these. So you're gonna go ahead and do that to all 12 jalapenos, which will give you 24 halves. If you have sensitive skin or you're sensitive to spicy, then you'll want to put on some rubber gloves before you do this. And whether or not you put on rubber gloves, you will not want to touch your eyes after you cut all these jalapenos. <laughs> I have learned that the hard way. Okay, now we're going to stuff these with this cheese mixture. I'm gonna get a smaller spoon because it's actually important that you don't overfill these. Sometimes you can think like overfilling just means more cheesy goodness, right? But in this case, you wanna fill to below the line here because if you overfill, then when they're baking, that cheese mixture is gonna come out and it's gonna basically bubble and burn on your pan and you'll have more to clean up. Although you could put parchment paper under and that would mitigate that a little bit. But if you can see, it's not quite flat up to the top there. So that is how I'm gonna fill them. not very dainty when I filled those and my hands are a little bit messy. I'm gonna wash them and then I'm going to wrap these in bacon and we will have bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers. And I have to share the most important tip for if you're gonna make these ahead and freeze them. Okay, I haven't decided if I'm going to wrap these in one bacon or half of a slice of bacon. Ooh, and I forgot to fill one but I'll fix that in a second. So we're just gonna first figure out if I'm gonna need one slice of bacon or half a slice of bacon. I feel like I could do it, I could get away with half. It's not terrible, but I'm gonna try a whole one after this next little half one. See how that goes. It's like half isn't quite big enough and whole is too big. Like it needs three quarters, but then some I'm gonna have to piece the bacon together. Anyway, whatever, you do it however you wanna do it. I think I'm gonna just go with this system. And like on this one where it didn't quite cover, I will just take this extra bacon and wrap that around the part that's not quite covered. So. We're gonna make this work, it'll be like a puzzle. If you wanna simplify it, <laughs> feel free. And that one was so giant, it needed a whole one. What I've discovered through trial and error is except for the extra long jalapenos, um, if you cut the bacon in half and kind of stretch it as you go, half a piece is plenty to wrap around the whole thing. So that's probably your best bet, except for like once in a while, we get one of these super long ones and it's just not quite enough to go around it if it's half, because you can have to wrap it three times instead of two. So for those, you do three quarters or you do one, or you could do half and just not cover the whole thing. So now that you've got them all wrapped up, and I was not very good at that, but you can learn from my mistakes and from my trial and error, you wanna put them on a baking sheet. And the reason for that is because we're gonna freeze them flat and as you can see, they're not overlapping. They're just laid out. I'm actually gonna move them a little bit so that they're not even really touching. And we're gonna lay them on, or we're gonna keep them on this sheet. We're gonna freeze them flat. Once they're frozen, I'm gonna transfer them. Now, you have two choices. You can transfer them to a freezer bag 
and once they're already frozen, they should stay nicely. You just lay them flat in the large freezer bag, or you can transfer them into a few of these foil containers. That way you can cook them straight in the container. Now this is particularly good if you wanna bring these to someone's house and that way you can pop them in their oven. If you're gonna be making them at home, you probably wanna save the freezer space and just freeze them in a large resealable freezer bag and that way you can put them onto a baking sheet. Now you can put them on parchment paper, like I said, to save your baking sheet or you can put them onto a cooking rack, cookie rack that is set on top of a baking sheet so that it the um, bacon grease drips down and doesn't make them soggy. That's a really nice way to do them. We are gonna get these in the freezer and then we are gonna get started on the next Make Ahead Appetizer. All right, for this next recipe, we're going to make those chicken taquitos. What I'm gonna do, because I hate wasting food, is I'm gonna take the tiny bit that's left over. See, it's just a tiny bit. But I'm gonna take the tiny bit that's left over from our um, stuffed jalapenos. And all that is, is the cream cheese, a little bit of sh shredded cheddar, and the pepper. So it's not gonna wreck the other recipe at all, because we're gonna be adding more cream cheese. We're gonna be adding a different kind of shredded cheese, but still. Same general idea, and this way, this like <laughs> tablespoon and a half or whatever it is won't go to waste, and I'll feel better about it. Plus, I can reuse the same bowl, which means less dishes. And you guessed it, I love that. Now, I'm gonna stick this in on the soften button in the microwave just to get it a little bit softer before I start working with it, and then we'll get started. All right, so we have our cream cheese um, softened and we're gonna add it to the bowl with all of that chicken that was shredded and then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add some shredded jalapeno jack cheese some lime juice I'm just gonna do you could use jarred or canned lime juice or what do you call it I don't know you'd use lime juice from a container or you could use um, fresh whatever it's up to you we are also going to add some cumin, some chili powder, some canned green chilies, and I probably will throw a little bit of salsa in here too, kind of making it up as I go. This is looking actually really, really good. I It smells good too. I'm gonna just add the shredded cheese and some sliced green onions, and I don't think I'm gonna do the salsa. I think I'm gonna skip that, but I will serve them with salsa so that people can dip them in the salsa if they'd like to. But really, I, I'm really liking the look and smell of it right now, and I don't wanna mess with it too much. So sometimes I change my plans partway through. open a pack of flour tortillas. We're going to again be putting these onto a baking sheet so that we can freeze them flat. We're going to freeze them raw and then once they're fully frozen I will transfer them into a large resealable freezer bag. On the day of cooking you're going to spray them a little bit just with some um, you know olive oil spray and then you're going to bake them so they will be nice and bubbly and hot. And you can serve them right away. And like I said, if you want, you can serve them with some salsa or some guacamole. They should be absolutely delicious. And this will be a nice one to pull out, again, when you've got company over or for one of your holiday game nights. You wanna put them down so that the seam is down, so they stay shut until they get frozen. And you're also gonna place them really close together because that also helps keep them closed. <music> to 
chicken taquitos are also great to make ahead for your kids for after school snacks or to take with them in their lunches. Now, when I send them for their lunches, I do bake them ahead, but for the after school snacks, they can actually take them from the freezer and bake them themselves because my kids are older and they're able to do that. I think it's been well established before this video, but rolling things is not really my forte. But again, things don't have to be perfect. They will still taste good and your guests will be impressed whether they look perfect or not. Maybe you haven't ever thought to make your holiday appetizers ahead, but there's probably some appetizers that you make regularly during the holidays that you could make ahead to freeze. A lot of dips freeze well, depending on, of course, what's in them, but I've got several dips that I make that freeze well. I have a black bean dip, a cheese dip, a spinach artichoke dip, just plain spinach dip freezes well, depending on the recipe you're using, but in general, spinach dip freezes really well. Uh, you can also freeze things like, I have a salmon cheese ball that goes on crackers and that freezes really well. It's got nice fresh dill in there. And another thing that freezes really well that I was going to show you today is chicken wings. But when I went to the store, they were all sold out of chicken wings, if you can believe that. So. I will just have to tell you about it. I was going to make sweet and sour chicken wings, but I also have a great lemon pepper chicken wing recipe and really any of your favorite, like a hot wing chicken wings, most of your favorite recipes for chicken wings will freeze really well. It's just like buying chicken wings that are already seasoned or made in the freezer aisle of your grocery store, except this way you know exactly what's in them it's less expensive and it's fresher. So making your own chicken wings ahead to keep them in your freezer means that you can pull them out for game day or for when you've got company over. So the other two things that I'm planning to make ahead this year for our holiday appetizers is mini cheese balls, which I haven't done before, but I know they're gonna be great. I've made mini cheese balls before, I haven't frozen them ahead, but I know that they'll freeze well now the other thing that we're going to make is I'm going to make this crab filling for mini pitas. Every year since I was a kid, on Christmas Eve, we had mini pitas stuffed with this very simple crab filling. And my dad loves it. And for him, it wouldn't be Christmas Eve without it. But this year, I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and make the filling ahead of time. And that way, I will have one less thing to do on the day. And I can just task one of my kids with filling the mini pittas. And it'll be a lot easier for me to concentrate on getting the actual meal done. If you have really great make-ahead appetizers, I would love it if you shared the recipes with me in the comments because I am always looking for new recipes. And like I said, I love appetizers, so I would really like to get some new recipes in my repertoire. <music> We're just going to throw together that crab dip mixture that I was talking about. Now you can serve this as a dip with tortilla chips or you can serve it on top of crackers or you can do what I do and use it to fill mini pitas. So all this is, I'm doubling the recipe. So I've got two small containers of imitation crab meat, two blocks, eight ounce blocks of cream cheese and I should have softened that better. We're just gonna mix this together and then we're going to add some seafood cocktail sauce. I don't know exactly how much seafood cocktail sauce because I just go based on color. When it gets to be the right color, then I stop adding it. <laughs> so I wish I had a better recipe for you, but this is just three ingredients, so easy to throw together. 
Also, if you love seafood cocktail sauce, I guess you would add more. And if you're not as big a fan, then add less. So that's one way you could go about it also. For these mini cheese balls, we are going to mix together some grated cheddar cheese, a block of cream cheese, so eight ounces of cream cheese, a dash of hot sauce, some dry onion, pepper, a little bit of lemon juice, and Worcester, Worcest, Worcester, yeah, Worcestershire, the W thing, and we are going to then put it in the fridge. Once it's mixed, we're gonna mix it with a hand mixer. We're gonna put it in the fridge to let it get a little colder. And then we'll roll it into balls and then roll the balls in, some of them in a blend of fresh parsley and dill and some of them in dried cranberries. That way we'll get those holiday colors. They will look really festive. When you pull these out of the freezer to thaw, then they can be served on crackers and they're gonna look really impressive at your holiday gathering because of those pops of color. Now that I've got some of these holiday appetizers in the freezer, I feel a little bit more prepared for Christmas. I hope that this gave you some ideas of how you can make some things ahead too to take some of the stress out of the holidays. Thanks for joining me today and happy cooking.